Hey there, and welcome back to another video. Remember, currently we are doing two videos per month. It looks like in July we'll be able to get back to our one video a week. So I'm super excited to get back with a little bit more content. We just had some catching up to do in the back end, but we are really pumped to get back to our weekly schedule of publishing videos. Now, one thing that we got to do in the meantime was actually revamp our masterclass, our free masterclass. So if you're interested in learning three secrets or three changes to improving your business, especially using like Japanese shells, then make sure you check out the free masterclass down in the description box below at the end of this video. Hey there and welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Paola of paolaponsenails.com and I help current and aspiring nail techs become thriving entrepreneurs by mastering all of your gel nail services using soft gel only. If this sounds like a niche you'd like to consider, then at the end of this video, do consider subscribing. Gel nails are a dominating nail service in the salons all over the world. It's the nail service of choice among many of us, including professionals and DIYers, because it works and it's relatively easy to apply. Like if you have experience painting your nails, you'll probably do at least an okay job applying your own gel nails. Gel nails are long lasting and they yield super shiny results. I would say that even the most affordable choice of gel polish online or elsewhere yields an ultra glossy finish, like a salon finish. But a beautiful long wear and shiny finish are easily ruined if you cannot get a proper cure on your gel. An improper cure is more common than you think or really that you can actually see. When gel nails are improperly cured, they will last only a few days as opposed to the average of three weeks. And that glossy finish will only be experienced for a week or so if, again, they are improperly cured. But what is actually even more concerning with uncured gel is the possibility of becoming allergic to your products. Yes, uncured or undercured gel can lead to allergic reactions. So to avoid all of these issues, I thought I'd jump in here and give you five of the most common curing gel nail mistakes to avoid and ensure that no matter at what stage you are in your nail journey, DIY, intermediate, or pro, you nail your application. Mistake number one, working with a miscellaneous curing unit. Now you most likely have heard that you should work with a curing unit designated for your gels, but I get your struggle. You don't use one brand, right? You mix and match and hey, I do that too. Is using the curing unit of each brand a good idea and most likely the best way to eliminate service breakdowns and allergies? I believe so. But this is a creative profession we are in and there are many units that will give us a quality cure in my experience because I haven't had trouble or curing issues for a few years now that I've been mixing brands. Okay, and I don't try to mix often, but you know, once in a while you do want a little bit of diversity or you do want to play with some fun stuff and you're obviously not going to buy the curing unit to play with some fun stuff. Okay, let's just be realistic, but you still have to be selective. Like I don't encourage you to jump onto every trend or buy everything, right? But keep in mind that when you don't use a brand's curing unit, you'll lose your support should you contact them for troubleshooting help. And so you just have to be okay with that if you're going to be mixing and matching product brands. Comprende? What I want you to avoid is to just randomly Google or Amazon a curing unit and go on with your business. Doing so may cause a lot of issues. And in an upcoming video, we will be outlining the characteristics of a curing unit you should consider before purchasing. But for now, what I want you to consider is the amount of brands you use when it comes to your core gels, like your base, builder, and top gel. I highly encourage you to just use one brand, maybe two. And then these gels are the most important in making your application last. So you wanna pay attention here and you gotta know them oh so well. Color gels, especially in soft potted gel systems, give little strength to your application. So mixing and matching brands of color should not cause you too much trouble. Like I know members in my community wonder if they can mix like Korean gels, right? Cause they're like really popular uh, with their Japanese gel nail systems and absolutely. But I also recommend that you just stick to the colors for now until maybe you're able to take some training or learn more about them. Once you've narrowed your brands down, you pretty much have the curing unit selected for yourself because the key to selecting a curing unit is choosing the one for which brand of gels you use the most, like super easy, right? And that's my recommendation as to which unit you should buy when you don't use one brand. So again, Consider using only one brand for 90% of your gel nail services so that you can easily choose the best curing unit for you and your business. Now, what if you're a super creative nail stylist or you're up and coming and cannot yet commit to using one primary brand in your services? Fine. Choose a curing unit from a brand that has been in the industry as a gel nail brand for years. These brands include Light Elegance or Gelish. And if you're a Japanese gel nail specialist, Cocoist and Leaf Gel offer great options as well. 
Mistake number two, applying your color too thick. 99% of the time, your color application, whether in a pot or a bottle, consists of two coats of color. So please, when applying your color, do not stress out with the first layer because if you do, you most likely will want to apply it too thick. This will lead to bubbling, chipping, and or peeling, especially with dark colors. And some of these Japanese gel nail colors can be really pigmented, the Korean brand ones too. So you want to be careful here. What you want to do is to trust your first coat of color application if you're going to panic at all. The second layer is where you may start panicking, okay? But even then, there's nothing that a third thin layer of color gel cannot fix. Adding a third layer of color gel to get true color opacity is rare, so please relax and take your time, all right? If the color is too pigmented and you applied it too thick, it will be difficult for the light to penetrate your color and give it a full cure. So you're going to incur the lifting issues, the chipping issues, and maybe other things, okay? Within light two or three days you or your client however say you have indeed applied it too thick and some bubbling or wrinkling has occurred this can actually start manifesting itself like a couple of days later so don't be surprised if you went too thick and then you're like well i thought it was okay and then your client contacts you two or three days later saying that you know it's bubbled or it's lifting like the actual just the color and they can actually see like another layer of kind of under cure gel underneath like that is definitely an indication that it did not cure properly so that it can manifest itself like two or three days later later so do not be shocked if your client says this she's not crazy well what you want to do in this case is file and buff the color off that has bubbled and flush it to the gel layer underneath then reapply your color gel again as you can imagine this could extend your service time significantly so you want to apply your color right the first time mistake number three under curing over curing is better than under curing. The worst thing that can happen if you over cure your gel nails is your top coat yellowing a bit. It might wear off by the way this yellowing will not remain, but it may. So like that's the worst thing that can happen. However, if you under cure, every potential problem is a possibility with gel nails, lifting, chipping, shriveling, etc. If you're mixing and matching product lines, it is best to cure every layer of gel 60 seconds as opposed to the more standard 30 seconds. Mistake number four, a relaxed or wrongly positioned hand in the curing unit. Unless you educate your client on the importance of correctly positioning the hands in a curing unit, they will more often than not have their hand a bit too relaxed or misplaced altogether. The correct way to position your hand in a curing unit is palm flat and fingers slightly spread. I also recommend that when you first get your curing unit, you take a look underneath and see where all of your bulbs are placed to make sure you don't have an odd positioning of them by the manufacturer. You also want to take a look and study your tray as there are sometimes some indentations to guide you and the customer into correctly placing your hand. Mistake number five. Oh boy, working with an old unit and is this more common than we think? Absolutely. When curing lamps with LED bulbs first debuted, they were promoted as lasting five years and sometimes having a lifetime wear right as you would never have to change the bulbs out as opposed to what you had to do with the uv lamps where you had to change the bulbs every like three months which can definitely add up and just be cumbersome but in the most recent years reputable companies have confirmed that five years or even a lifetime of use is not recommended and it's not the correct time to promote quite frankly this is because the intensity of your lamp and the parts inside actually will decrease in quality and now the recommended usage is two years for steady heavy use or three years of less frequent use so if two or three years after having bought your unit you find yourself mysteriously having lifting other service breakdowns the invisible enemy may well be your curing unit so take note if you're doing everything right and then all of a sudden you're having these problems and you're like what's going on and it's like common and consistent then it may be well again that invisible enemy which is your old curing unit now for this reason alone also also, the price of curing units has gone down. Believe it or not, when curing units, the LED kind became available and became a thing, they were actually running for like $400. $300 was still like almost average. And then slowly but surely, they started to kind of decreasing the shell, right? Like the quality of the shell became more plastic as opposed to like metal or some other heavy, strong material. They understand that you will have to get one every two to three years. So the price has gone down significantly. And now the average cost of a good curing unit is about $125, I must say, which with some being a little bit more expensive, like the Cocos and Leaf Joe around $200, 
but my community and I use the Cocoa It's one and we kind of say that it's like the Rolls Royce of the industry. Like, and it pretty much cures any gel because it's an UV LED and it has like the uh, wavelength that cures both photo initiators and a gel. So pretty cool. Just my recommendation if you want to ask me what I suggest. And obviously because it's in our niche of Japanese gels. So Cocoa and Leaf Gel are the ones that I use um, and the ones that I would recommend because I have experience using them. I hope you took notes on all of the mistakes to avoid an improper cure that will lead to lifting issues or other service breakdowns. To recap, they are number one, working with a miscellaneous curing unit. Number two, applying your color too thick. Number three, under curing your gel nails. Number four, a wrongly positioned hand. And number five, working with a unit older than three years. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe so that you are the first to know when our next topic posts. If you made it to the end of this video, why not stick around for our next video? Don't forget to check out the description box for any active promo codes as well as other free resources. So YouTube has updated our channel to include thanks. So if at any moment, <laughs> I hope you are very thankful for our content. Give us a little thanks and that's a little donation. If you look at the title area or the specifications of the video underneath, you'll be able to see the thanks with a heart button. But just wanted to let you know that we do have that feature and not a lot of content curators get it. So whatever the reason was that YouTube decided to grant it to our channel, we are super thankful because obviously it's a little extra income that we can have while we produce free content for you. Remember it's free. You don't owe us a penny. This is all for you to devour. But again, if you're feeling thankful whenever, just know that that feature is now underneath our videos.